Another week, another problem with the Ford. It's great if you have a YouTube channel and you have an old car like this because you get lots of content to make. Uh, this time it's a misfire and um, I'll talk about the uh, cause of it, which is going to be the uh, high tension leads um, in just a moment. But first, um, if you have a misfire, firstly you need to identify that it is a misfire and uh, then of course you need to uh, work out what's causing it. Um, a misfire sort of feels like the engine is uh, missing. Um, it, it's like the, the power gives out in the little um, pulses. Uh, like, especially when the engine's under load, if you're climbing a hill, you'll feel like uh, something's wrong, very obviously wrong. Um, you won't have the smooth pulling power that you usually have. And um, very often it'll sort of start, like you'll just notice it once every now and then, then it'll get progressively worse and worse until you're feeling it all the time. Um, a lot of people mistake it very often with a gearbox uh, problem. They think that there's something wrong with the transmission because it sort of feels like the, uh, you know, the, the, the transmission isn't giving you power, but it's uh, more commonly a misfire. Um, to check that it is a misfire, it's helpful to have a scan tool because the scan tool, uh, the, the computers inside modern cars are quite good at identifying faults. Like misfires, they can um, identify them quite, quite reliably and they'll give you a misfire flag and they'll often give you a, uh, a count of how many misfires there have been um, and they might even tell you which cylinder is uh, specifically is misfiring or uh, maybe there's more than one. Um, so once you can see that on a scan tool, you know for sure that it is a misfire. And then the next thing would be to work out uh, what's causing it. There can be three possible things. Uh, it's either fuel, air, or spark, or ignition. Um, usually it's ignition, um, but people, you know, people commonly jump into replacing spark plugs or leads or coil packs when it may not be. It, it can be fuel and it can be air. So you do need to consider that. If uh, you have uh, things like spark plugs reaching the end of their service life, then you, you know, you probably want to, it's going to be a good idea to replace them anyway. So you could just go ahead and replace them and see if that fixes the problem. Um, but uh, if you want to be more uh, analytic about it, then you can again use the scan tool and you can uh, just look to see if there are signs of um, any other problems. For example, um, you know, like a, uh, a rough idle or a fluctuating idle, uh, something, and a, a high idle would be um, indicative of a vacuum leak, for example. That could cause a misfire. Um, there can be problems with the fuel system. Uh, if you look at the fuel trim, uh, the long term and short term fuel trim, that can give you an idea if, if the car's running uh, rich or lean. Um, that can um, indicate problems. So you would need to, if you did have, if you did see some issues there, you would need to go off down that rabbit hole and work out what the problem was there. Um, in my case, all those things look fine, so I look to spark, um, which means uh, either spark plugs or leads or the uh, coil pack. Now I'm talking, of course, about a coil and lead system uh, like this one, not the more modern alternative of coil on plug uh, where you don't have the leads. Uh, in some senses, that would simplify things, um, but on this engine, the first thing to do is to uh, take out the leads themselves. The connectors on the spark plugs can be a little stuck, um, and it's important that you pull on the connector plug itself, not the flexible lead, as uh, doing that would be a good way to break the internals of the lead. And then the leads also need to be disconnected at the coil pack end. I'm skipping over some things here, by the way. Obviously, uh, you should look for any signs of obvious physical damage, uh, but you can also look for signs of electrical shorting while the engine is running uh, by checking for arcing, uh, but I wasn't seeing any evidence of that. So that's the coil pack there, in case you didn't know. Uh, also a candidate suspect for failure. Um, its electrical connector on this engine is hidden under the uh, air intake duct, it's a little tricky to see, but it's uh, easy enough to feel it. And its plug works with this uh, metal clip, which is depressed to release the connector. You can see how it works there. Now, before going any further, I had a look at the spark plug wells. Um, I replaced the uh, rocker cover gasket um, on this engine just last year. 
So while there weren't any external oil leaks, uh, it did occur to me that there might be a leak or two at the plug wells, uh, which, you know, if bad enough, could fill up the whole well and uh, certainly cause problems. However, these were nice and dry, and the plugs themselves looked quite clean. Um, I'll take them out another time to look more closely, but for now there was just one exception to note, which was uh, number two. It had some uh, black soot on its connector. Um, and it was much the same story with the plug boots on the leads. Now you can look up inside them like this to see the metal connector that clips to the spark plug. And they all looked okay except number two. Now this shot's not the best macro photography, sorry, but uh, basically it was black inside. Uh, especially the side walls, uh, they were covered in a black soot. Um, and in comparison, you can see that the others were okay and nice and clean. So the soot is uh, evidence of a connection problem. If there's not a good electrical run, then uh, what happens is the high voltage will jump the gap and that sparking creates this uh, carbon buildup. Um, I also looked at the coil ends and again, most were okay, but uh, the one had this sort of graying corrosion or, or buildup on its connector. And on the pack itself, the connector towers repeated the story. Uh, this side is uh, actually not number two, it's a uh, different connection here, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. The next thing I did was uh, investigate to the extent possible what could be measured electrically uh, with a multimeter, starting with the resistance of the leads. I couldn't find what the Ford specification is for these leads. If anyone knows, uh, let me know in the comments, please. Uh, but it's worth getting the numbers anyway, if only to see if there are any outliers or any obviously strange results. So you can see I was measuring 4.5 kilo ohms on the uh, longest lead here. And when I measured the physical length of that from end to end, it's basically 50 centimeters, which is to say the resistance on a per meter basis is uh, 9 kilo ohms, uh, which I think is pretty good. Then, uh, with lead number two, which was the uh, sooted up one, I wasn't able to get a measurement. The multimeter was not detecting continuity at all. So I'll come back to that. Anyway, you would expect uh, all the other shorter leads to uh, just come in below whatever the uh, longest one measured. Um, there's not really any need to work it out per meter for each one. Uh, this resistance is a crude diagnostic. It's just a useful pointer, really. And yeah, if you get no reading at all on a lead, then that is surely a problem. And uh, while I was poking things with the multimeter, I measured the coil pack resistance. Uh, firstly, you can look at the numbers between the coil connectors. Uh, between two pairs, I was getting about uh, 10 kilo ohms, and then zero diagonally between the other two pairs, uh, which is about right, if I understand things correctly. Um, again, this is not a complete diagnostic by any measure. It does not prove that the coil pack is 100% okay, um, but if it did have a major short internally or something, then it should show up, show that up. So it's worth doing. And the other thing to measure on the coil is the resistance on the uh, low volt voltage side, that's to say on the connector. Um, the number between the two pairs uh, made up uh, that bit of the uh, middle terminal to um, both of the outside terminals each uh, is supposed to be 0 0.8 ohms in both cases. So um, you can see that this one comes in exactly as it should. And uh, by the way, I removed the air intake hose here for uh, access, which does make life easier. Right, so with all that done, uh, my theory so far was that maybe I hadn't properly reseated the plug boot connector when I uh, did the rocker cover gasket job, and uh, that had maybe resulted in a poor connection leading to the soot buildup, and uh, you know that it was um, maybe just the soot preventing my multimeter probe from contacting the lead, and hence the zero continuity. Um, not likely in retrospect, but anyway, I figured I'd try cleaning it up and uh, see how that went. Uh, this is a tube brush, a uh, metal one would be better, uh, but I just used a bit of brake clean on it and um, gave it a bit of a scrub. And that certainly worked in the sense that it cleaned out the soot and uh, I had what looked like a nice shiny metal again, but yeah, no joy on the electrics. So uh, that number two lead is basically broken. It it's, must be broken internally, uh, probably at the joint of the lead and the plug connector. 
and either it's just worn out or maybe it's been broken by somebody uh, pulling on the lead uh, while pulling the connector off the plug. Uh, that would be something that's likely to happen. Anyway, it needs replacing. And just while I'm playing with my toothbrush, I did use it to clean up everything else I could while I was at it. That uh, grayed connector on the coil pack, I gave it a bit of a scratch up until I had it looking a bit healthier. Um, and I also made sure to clean off the soot that was uh, left on the spark plug itself down in the well. Uh, now, when you do this, you end up making a mess inside the plug well, which is hard to clean, of course. Compressed air is ideal to blast it out. But if you don't have a compressor, then uh, like me, you can improvise a vacuum cleaner extension like so and uh, get everything nice and particle, particle free to the extent possible. Okay, so uh, I made an emergency trip to a local wreckers and I convinced the guy to go out into the yard and poach a set of old leads off a of Duratec. Uh, the Ford dealerships will totally take the proverbial on this sort of thing, by the way. Um, there's really not a sensible alternative either where I am. So what I will need to do is order a proper new set from overseas. Uh, which will obviously take a while to get here. Um, but in the meantime, I needed something to get me by. It's not ideal, but uh, what I did was um, make up a new set using the best leads from uh, each of the sets that I ended up with, just as measured again by resistance. So here's the old set on top with uh, number two still not measuring any continuity, whereas the uh, the wreckers set number two is giving about uh, five kiloohms. So resistance a little bit high compared to mine, but at least it works. Um, and I actually found that uh, with the rest of the secondhand leads, the uh, the resistance in all of them was uh, higher than mine. Uh, the longest one here was nearly nine kilo ohms, which is to say nearly 18 kilo ohms per meter, uh, which is a lot higher than my one. So I actually only ended up poaching the one lead that I needed from this set as uh, mine were otherwise all better just going by that. Um, and then I had a renewed set that should at least work, um, although uh, it still needed replacing with a proper new set, whereupon I would then have a spare to keep somewhere. And before I put them back on the engine, I gave them a little treatment with this uh, electrical protectant spray I like to use. It's supposed to shield against water and corrosion. Uh, a lot of people like to use silicone grease or uh, something similar to cover the uh, the plug connectors. Um, but I think that just makes a mess, and uh, so long as the plug boots themselves are properly sealing against the rocker cover holes, yeah, that should be sufficient. Well, in putting the leads back on the engine, if you've made up a new set like me, or uh, even if you've bought new, I guess, it would be smart to double check each lead is running from the right plug to the right coil connector, as uh, you're going to have fun if you get them mixed up. Uh, the clip that holds them together should make this easy because the uh, the connectors should sort of fall into the right place. But if they were assembled wrong, it uh, would also put you wrong, if you see what I mean. So you should double check that. This coil connector here is the one that was grey, so uh, I just gave it an extra little wiggle to try to help the connector. Uh, but even once the leads are replaced, that coil will need to have an eye kept on it. Uh, the connectors uh, go in um, with three clicks. They're quite satisfying, really. And you know that they're right because you can feel them go click, click, click. And the uh, the plug connectors, they just have one larger click, so to say. And you want to push them directly from above. Uh, don't allow any lateral force to be exerted on the plug down below. Um, and in doing this properly, the boot will correctly seal around the rocker cover hole. And then you'll uh, also want to get the leads tidied up so that they're out of the way and as protected as possible. And then that's about it for this job. The uh, This new lead along with that uh, cleanup certainly fixed my misfire. Uh, you'd want to check this, of course, by um, not only monitoring the engine yourself, but watching the scan tool like a hawk the first time you uh, run the engine. Um, sometimes replacing one component like this will sort of get you halfway there, um, but there might still be other problems remaining, uh, like my coil pack for example. It seems to be working, but with that discoloured connector it may yet uh, prove to need replacing too. And I'll also have a look at the plugs themselves at a later point. Okay then, that will uh, do for this video. So this car's just got the uh, the old 
leads from the wreckers, the, the set that I made up in it. I'm going to order some uh, new ones, but I'm not going to buy them locally, so I'll have to wait for them. Um, I might make another video uh, talking more about leads because there is more to talk about uh, once I get them. But uh, that's how you um, fix your misfire today. Hope that was helpful. Have fun.